Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. The problem here is the food sucks. Chef Ramsay heads to the heart of America. God bless Middle America. South Bend, Indiana. That looks like it closed down 10 years ago. And finds some unforgivable food. It looks like a dog's dinner. What is that? In need of extraordinary help. Good and gracious God, we ask to bless this food. Amen. But Gordon's going to need more than a prayer to turn this restaurant around. It's an insult to fast food. It just makes me want to cry. Two of the owners are barely there. Rick, you're not here. You can't blame this on me. Yeah, you're never here. The third is running it into the ground. What's wrong with the business? John. I've lost the passion. Oh, my God. And an angry staff is caught in the middle. You're killing this man over here saying that he's not good at anything. And don't blame everything on him. Can Gordon unite the owners and resurrect Jay Willings? I'm not going to do anything. Don't give up on us yet. We're going to end up homeless, and it's all because of Jay Willies. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> South Bend, Indiana a middle-class town made famous by the University of Notre Dame. Just a few miles down the road is Jay Willie's restaurant, owned by husband and wife Rick and Tricia and their friend John William. We're having a great day, day at Jay Willie's. This is Richard speaking. How may I help you? When we took this over, it was making great money. Every year, consistently, this made great money. Yo, yo, let's make money, man. Come on. The day-to-day -day management of Jay Willie's is left to John, as Rick and Tricia live over three hours away where they own another restaurant. Who knows what's gonna happen tonight? We assumed that John would be able to uphold the service standards and the food quality that we have, and it will continue to make money. I can do it. And John has run us into the ground. John has just let things go. I certainly got it off kilter. He needs to step up. He's got to be the spark. He's got to be the fire. He can't just be back there. Uh, 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 thinking and contemplating what he's supposed to do. He's got to do it. It's really been tough. Since we were struggling and we weren't really bringing in the cash, we don't have a chef in the kitchen. I'm just here to to serve what he wants me to serve and get it out as fast as possible. All right, got an order up. You get a lot of complaints about the quality of the food here. And that was just a frozen patty. I'd rather really have a little bit of burn. That was really gross. It's not much fun working in a restaurant when all you have to experiment with is canned beans and uh, enchilada sauce out of a jar. The standards have declined so far that I, I'm not even sure we can revive it. I don't think we'll come back unless something's fixed. Sales have just pretty much flatlined. You know, this sucks. This is tough. Now, this place is so depressing, it's hard to even talk about it because it just makes me want to cry. <sighs> now it's just slipped into complete failure. Once it closes, all the money I put in, everything, you know, my inheritance, everything, it's gone. If we don't make that 22000 a week, then we're cooked. We've cashed in our 401ks, we have no savings, and there's nothing left. So, I mean, if this doesn't work, we will no longer be here. We're gonna end up homeless, and it's all because of Jay Willis. <sighs> but it's just, you know, that's it. Willie's Bar and Grill, that's fine, but as for that ghastly sign at the bottom, whenever a sign's flashing, it means desperation. The outside building, well, that looks like it closed down 10 years ago. Let's hope inside is much better. My God. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good morning. Rick Excellent. Sutton. Rick, good to see you. Gordon. David Benningham. Nice David, to nice to see you. First of all, who put that ghastly sign up outside, the one with the flashing lights? I believe our owner, John. Is John here? Yes, he is. I can't wait to meet him.
Very embarrassed to have Gordon Ramsay come in here. Uh, he's a world-renowned chef. We're not even close to being up to a decent standard. <sighs> chef Ramsay. John William. John, good Owner. to see you. So you are Jay Willie? Yes, sir. Excellent. Good. Take a seat. Chef, this is uh, my wife. And first name, sorry? Trisha. Trisha, nice yeah, to see you. Nice to meet you. So, Trisha and Rick. Yeah, we're together. Yeah. And John is your partner. Yes. So I'm going to have a good look at the menu and uh, look forward to catching up with all three of you. I'm really nervous about what he might order because there's quite a few items on the menu. And I know he's not going to like the pictures in there. Always nervous when there's menus with ghastly pictures. Did you need a few more moments? Um, do you know what? I'm going to order the uh, loaded potato pizza. Yeah, let's go for the uh, famous ribs. I'll go for this pulled pork cheese boat. Not a problem. Thank you, my darling. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Say a little prayer. Trust me, I already said a prayer today. OK, here's his order. Is that Ramsey? Yes, sir. I'm just hoping Gordon Ramsey isn't too hard on me because this type of food wasn't my idea. This fryer is ready to go. God, it's grim in here. Sad and grim. And a carpet that looks like it's had a thousand buffaloes walking all over it. Holy shit. Yep. I now have loaded baked potato pizza. Lovely. Thank you, mate. <laughs> Holy mackerel. That's the strangest pizza I've ever seen. I'm going to ask my beloved father to bless my food. Gentlemen, can I ask a quick favor? Yes. What's yes. that? Would you mind just blessing my food? Oh, yeah, oh would you? sure. Yeah? If you'd be so kind. Absolutely. Well, good and gracious God, we ask that you bless this food, bless Chef Gordon as he is about to receive it, that it may nourish him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. Fingers crossed. <laughs> God. Oh, my God. What is all that on there? That is a ranch sauce. So they put a ranch dressing on the pizza? Yes. It's almost like sort of wallpaper paste. So the pizza sucks. Jake, I can see that right there. Can I help you? John, your pizza has bombs. To be honest, I, I've tasted the pizza, and it tasted good. I didn't see what he was talking about. The rib's going to be right, huh? What do you think? Yep. Perfect ribs. Finally, the ribs. Lovely. Thank you. You're welcome. I was hoping maybe, just maybe, he'd like the ribs. Chef, we doing all right here. Who's responsible for the sauce? The chef's recipe or? It's a generic sauce. It's a shame, because it just destroys the flavor. Uh, they are embarrassing. Yeah, I mean, you've got cartilage in there, a mouthful of fat, grease on the outside. That's not even trimmed. Sad. Uh, I agree. I'm very embarrassed. A bit like the restaurant. Sad. Yeah. Dude, we're serving an untrimmed rib. What do you want trimmed off? The fat. All ribs have fat on John doesn't get it. He's ordering an inferior rib. He's trying to cut corners. I'm just so frustrated that I feel like banging my head against the wall. Sandwich with French fries. Thank you, Dwayne. Enjoy. Thank you. Processed cheese that just like gluing. Pulled pork sandwich. Yeah, that's pulled straight out of the bin. Sweet, taste of nothing, and absolutely ghastly. Oh, dear. We have a pulled pork sandwich. Oh, um, sorry, excuse me. Forgive me, Father, but oh. they have sinned, and I, out of respect for you guys, you're not going to eat that, OK? OK. I don't want to go straight to hell. Oh, man. Forgive me. They have sinned. After saving the priests from an ungodly meal, dear, oh dear, Gordon's anxious to meet the creative minds responsible for the food. Jeff, Gordon, are you the chef? We don't really have a chef. How can we not have a chef? The recipes don't really change. Everything's prepared the same way. You seem to stand proud of that. The menu was designed to cut a lot of the labor out. Cut a lot of labor out? And serve shit. I finally am glad that I have somebody who agrees with me as far as the standards on the food. John doesn't listen to me. Hopefully, he'll listen to Gordon. I think of Midwest cuisine, you think of the excitement in terms of, you know, a lovely braised rib, a fantastic sauce. The sauce was synthetic. We sell a lot of them. 
Is that an excuse to serve shit because you sell a lot of them? Are you that lazy? Or you sell them, so fuck it, who cares? Oh, sorry, that attitude stinks. Can we have a chat as owners? Yes, somewhere? Sir. Yeah, Work. together? Right now. Joe, ready? Hi, yeah, yeah. Well, that went about as, in, as I expected. Yeah. Dissatisfied with the answers found in the kitchen, Gordon takes the owners aside, hoping to determine the root of the problem. What's wrong with the business? John. John has to be the leader here. He's not taking any ownership. Passion. Exactly. And there's none. I try, but without any money, the passion is tough when, you, when you're going downhill. How much are we in for if we had to close the door tomorrow? Million two. So you're, you're on your ass. I'll lose the first and only house I've ever owned. Yeah, we've never owned a house before. Any children anywhere? No, we no. can't have kids. I'm too busy babysitting two restaurants. Trisha, she deserves to have kids, too. My wife would love to have a child. She deserves it. But we can't do it because of Jay Willis. I mean, I just feel so bad because I keep She's such a beautiful woman, I can't give her what she, she deserves. I, I, this wasn't how we planned our lives. We are in the ship. We're screwed. Gordon is hoping tonight's dinner service will give him some more answers as to why this restaurant is failing. Hi there. Welcome to Jay Willie's. How are you folks doing today? Blood Gates is open. Potato skins, sure. I'm thinking the fish sandwich. Oh, got a 16-inch pizza. What's that for? It's a special pizza. So that's a frozen dough. Yeah. Frozen dough. Ranch dressing. And then the what are these little fish food pellets? What are they? Yeah, pre-frozen sausage. That's the saddest excuse I've ever seen for a pizza in my life. There's no doubt I've taken some, I've cut some corners. Some of the items are frozen, and that's just from a cost point of view. What's that there? Uh, cooked chicken. I mean, it's like cat food in here. Well, it'll get fully cooked. It's really hard when you're trying to stay open. And what's in here? Some baked potatoes. You don't clean them before they go in? They're supposed to. My god. That's the. I, I didn't put them in the oven. Everything's reheat. God bless Middle America. The quality of the food is just not there. I wouldn't feed it to my dog. It's embarrassing. It really is. Buy it, defrost it, fry it, send it. You can't call yourself a restaurant. No wonder no one's coming back. Jay Willies is doing bad because John is not upholding the standards. What are up. OK, thank you. The things that I see in this restaurant, it's like he, he accepts it all and rolls uh, rolled over and died. You think it's too greasy? So you sent your fish back. Yes, I did. What is that? Fish sandwich. Fish sandwich. I like it. It's frozen. Holy mackerel. My whole sandwich is like all fat. I want something I'm going to eat. What have we got here? Oh, lordy. What's wrong with that, darling? She doesn't like it. She doesn't like it. It looks like a dog's dinner. What is that? Oh, my God. That is a shock. Uh, I'm absolutely devastated. I mean, they're cutting corners, but all in the wrong places. And John's clueless. Nobody responsible for the kitchen, but overall, it's an insult to fast food. It's a fucking disgrace. Oh, son of a. Why are the ribs back? She said it was, these were too mushy, these were too cold. Is it good? <laughs> <laughs> oh, garlic, even. There's food coming back. They're not eating. I, I, I don't know what to say. Horrible. Food just put in the process line, more food coming back that's been sent out. I mean, it's almost like you guys have just, you know, given up. I'm standing here with my jaw on the floor. This was definitely humiliating, eye-opening, embarrassing. Gordon Ramsay's appearance at the restaurant may have brought in some extra customers. We're not eating. We're going to eat some else. But unfortunately, the food has scared many of them away. Jay Willies is doing bad because John's killing off the business. That's the bottom line. 
After a miserable dinner service, Gordon decides that he needs to meet with not only the owners, but with the entire staff. We have some serious issues back there. I wanted you all together to get an idea of how you felt. And how does it make you feel when you serve that food? Not very good. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. I'm amazed you guys put up with it. It's getting harder and harder every day because the paychecks keep getting slimmer and slimmer. And our sales are dropping like a rock because of John's inability to make anything happen. Rick, you're not here. You're killing this man over here saying that he's not good at anything. Sam wouldn't be here if this restaurant wasn't dying. So you don't, you can't blame this on me. I'm, I'm not blaming it, it all I'm on you. There's no, stuff bro. everywhere. I'm saying That's don't three blame three everything on time. him. You're yeah, you're, yeah, you're never here. Say that. I cannot come down here and run this restaurant. We live three and a half hours away. John has to do it. It has to come from John. The point, the point is, okay. you're just so, not helping so the business, your and you're blaming point. John for it, and it's wrong. He's here, okay, yeah, he's so, here every day, and, so and what he else goes through this. To ruin our you know, this is our business, too. I have mouths at home to feed. Nail me to the cross. Rick's ridiculous. I really just want to punch Rick sometimes. To be honest, this whole issue is not what the problem is with this restaurant. The problem here, whether we all like it or not, is the food sucks, and it's not fresh, and even frozen food is handled badly. All three of you should be ashamed to stand there and allow it to go on. Is it time to get somebody else in to run it? I mean, you know, have you had enough? I believe it's still in me. I just need somebody to help. I need somebody to cover my back. All three of you need to wake up, and wake up quickly. Coming up, we're sat here wondering why the business is on his ass. Gordon uncovers more problems at Jay Willings. I wanted to hide my face so people wouldn't associate me with such crap. Forcing the owners to take drastic action. Unbelievable. Let it go. Is the staff in this restaurant so clueless? And I don't know what to do. That it may be impossible for Gordon Ramsay to turn them around. I'm not going to do anything until you're ready to commit. Don't give up on us yet. Up next on Kitchen Nightmares. After the staff meeting, Gordon takes a peek into the kitchen storage. What's that there? And uncovers the unthinkable. This is basic hygiene. It doesn't get drained and the blood is sat out in a warm kitchen. It's not even cold. John, there's more. When Chef Gordon pulled those potato skins out, I knew that he had found something that I wasn't going to like. So hold on a minute. That's going to be deep fried tomorrow. That's really going to make it taste better, right? The taste is a rotten. And we're sat here wondering why the business is on its ass. It starts at the top, John. It's called responsibility. No wonder you've given up. I've been in denial, and I've lowered my standards. And it takes somebody like a Gordon Ramsay to come in and, and wake you up. Rotten tomatoes. Soft, rotten, oh. rotten peppers. The whole box is rotten. I wanted to crawl under the table and hide my face so people wouldn't associate me with such crap. If you seriously are honest with yourself, that you are starting again, then we start again. Well, we'll do whatever it takes. I'd be fucking ashamed. Chef, I'm embarrassed. Where do I start with the problems in this restaurant? The staff have got their issues, but that's irrelevant. The big problem is the food. And the quicker they all get up to speed with how shit the food is, the better, because that is embarrassing. John. Yeah. You're going to pitch all this crap? Chef Ramsay gave us a challenge to see if we're committed to changing this food and making it better. It's a fresh start for every, everybody, everything. All right. Oh, my God, are they taking all the food out? They are. I guess we start new tomorrow. I guess so. I was absolutely ecstatic that he was throwing everything away. It has been a huge complaint for a long time. So how does it feel to throw that away? Does it feel like a purging? Yeah, I have to now. It could. It's a huge amount of food that we threw away this evening. John, does it feel good? Yeah? We're starting fresh, and that means getting rid of everything. When I finally saw John throwing out food that he would have otherwise saved, I knew that we were taking the first step to making progress. OK, it's a fresh start to a fresh day. 
after the owners took it upon themselves to clean out their restaurant, this morning, Gordon is looking for the owners to bear their souls. Good morning. How are we? Good. Tough day yesterday. Real tough. Cleaned out the restaurant, cleaned out the kitchen, and I'd like to think we started a, a new chapter. I want to chat with you. I want to clean out our conscience. Rick, go first, yeah? Let's go. OK. Clearing your conscience is about reaching inside and being honest with yourself. Yeah. Biggest fear is what? My fate rests in John's hands, and that really scares me. I want this to work desperately. I, I just haven't got much to work with. That's what I'm struggling with. Most people who face depression and problems I have give up, and I, I refuse to do that. I will fight till the last dog dies. I like your determination, you know that. I appreciate it, Chef. Who'd you turn to? I don't have a, anybody to voice my concerns, so it's been tough. Everything's pretty much inside. That's not easy. Truthfully, I'm just struggling to find an internal flame. Have you got it? Because I don't feel it. With support, I've got it inside me. It's there. What I saw last night was huge. What I uh, felt last night was huge. And what I feel this morning, I'm ready to go. Look forward to seeing you later. Trish, what do you want to see happen? I want John to be Jay Willie. <sighs> if I could take half a rig and put it in John's body, I think things would be a little bit better. He'd have more enthusiasm, a little bit more passion. He's just lacking in that. Thank you, Trisha. Thanks. Having gained a deeper understanding of the owner's situation, Gordon is ready to start implementing his plan, beginning in the place that needs it the most. Come through. The kitchen. Look at all that ingredients. What's that for? Barbecue sauce. Excellent. Barbecue sauce. First off, garlic, ketchup, chili, ground coffee, soy sauce, spice. First off, olive oil, yeah? Quite generous on the olive oil. That gives the shine on the sauce, yeah? It was an absolutely amazing experience working with Gordon Ramsay. Nicely caramelized. I'm just in utter awe of his ability as a chef. And then a molasses. That gives it its barbecue flavor, OK? And that is a barbecue sauce. We're serving fresh, homemade barbecue sauce tonight. <laughs> In addition to the new Jay Willie's signature barbecue sauce, Gordon introduces a new hamburger special that Jay Willie's has never offered before, one made with fresh ingredients. Homemade burger, so with a homemade barbecue sauce and fresh cut homemade fries. Are we ready? Yes. As customers arrive, Just follow me. the kitchen prepares the new burger specials. We're serving real food tonight. And everyone seems eager to make tonight's service a success. We have a homemade fresh ground beef burger. I am going to have a burger. I got yeah, Thank you. Got your ticket. Go ahead and uh, get those fries coming. Four orders. You can do it. Tonight, prove it, yes? It's a half hour into dinner service. Kobe's are done. And the new burger specials are flying out of the kitchen. It's really fresh, isn't it? That barbecue sauce smells good. It's incredible in there. The difference in the energy is extraordinary. And it just goes to prove one single thing on the menu. Freshly made, homemade, sells like hotcakes. Oh, boy. Walking in, we got three chef specials going well done. The tickets kept coming in, and I got real nervous. I could barely read the tickets. Two medium wells and a medium. Make that two well dones, five mid wells. I thought you said two mediums. Uh, make it, make it a medium well. Dude, I need you to tell me what I have, dude, because now I'm all fucked up. I was frustrated. I wanted to throw stuff. I wasn't okay with the organization at all. Fuck, wow. dude, I don't know what's going on. I'm fucking up burgers. Is this burger you gave me? Is that the well done? No, it was. You said mid well. It's done, dude. All right, got an order up. Thank you. Despite the confusion over the burgers... Burger, burger, burger. ...they are rushed out to the dining room. A new burger? And the customers are in for an unpleasant surprise. It's pink. Is it pink? It's over. It's all right. How many burgers have we got left? 
Uh, one more burger. OK, Christian. 86 burger, yes? Hey, yes, sir. Stop. All right. Yes? Yes. Make sure everybody knows, David, please. Yes, sir. Chris, I need two recooks, medium on the fly. Yeah, we can't make that burger. We're completely out of ground beef. Oh, my gosh. All of a sudden, burgers came back undercooked, overcooked, and it's bad. We don't have it. We don't okay. have it. We don't have it. We got a burger coming back. It's supposed to be well done. No, we're out. Unbelievable. We got another recook. This is ridiculous. We are all kind of freaking out. You know, it was scary. Burger's sitting over here. Burger's here. Burger's here. And I don't know what to do. It's an hour into dinner service, and the kitchen has run out of its special, fresh hamburgers. We're completely out of ground beef. And the burgers that have been served are unfortunately coming back. We got a burger coming back. With no one taking control of the situation. I don't know what to do. The kitchen, and the restaurant for that matter, is in a state of confusion. Dave, could you uh, grab us a package of the old burgers? Sweet sourdough instead of buns? We gotta do what we gotta do. Get them out the burger. They're gonna love it anyway. Sourdough or bun. Hell yeah. I was just gonna keep trying to put the food out. We're going back to regular fries. So we started making the burgers on sourdough bread and using the frozen french fries and the frozen ground beef. Dude, this, I can't serve this, can I? I don't care. Serve me what? I mean, I, I guess I have to. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. In an effort to make good on the orders. Order up, Ashley. A desperate kitchen staff lowers its standards and starts delivering cheap substitutes. Sorry about that. You good? Your bun? That is all we have is a bun. And the disappointment combined with the long wait is too much for one customer to bear. I'm really excited. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like something else? You ran out of the fries. You ran out of the bun. This is bad. No. The whole dinner is gone. Uh, it came, the burger came back. Sorry. Take it off for check. In tears. Uh, she's in tears? Yeah! <laughs> what is that pile of shit? What's that for? For the special burgers. What? Whoa, hey guys, why is that burger on there, the processed one? John, why did the 86 it when I said take it off? We were dropping the standards just a bit, but. We were under tremendous pressure because there were so many people out there that were anxious to try the food. If we haven't got the right buns, we shouldn't be serving it. And what's the point in lowering the standard just to keep it on? It doesn't make fucking sense. Boys, that's got to go bad. Yeah. He's afraid of pink. Sorry. Ugh. Now I got two paper plates around some sort of big meatball. <laughs> How do you run out of potatoes? <laughs> what do they say? It's disgusting, unedible. Unbelievable. Such a shame because we got off to a really good start, but then standards started dropping, but John and Rick accepted the standards dropping and they just were happy to send slop. So a real sad ending to the evening because right now we're back to square one. You should be ashamed. I busted my balls all day today thinking of a way of marketing this place and putting it back on the map. Oh, fuck it. Can't do it. Shit. I'm not going to do anything until I'm 100% convinced that you guys are ready to turn the corner. I seriously want to help. I need to know from each and every one of you that you're ready to commit. I commit. Are you? I'm ready to commit. OK, see you in the morning. I'm here early. Taking the staff's word of commitment to heart, Gordon moves forward with his plan to transform Jay Willie's from a dreary restaurant into a more inviting establishment. All right, guys, good morning. Good How are we feeling? Can you see? Good now. Yes. Awesome. Doesn't that look great? Jay Willie's Barbecue awesome. House. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to be the best barbecue house in town. Oh. Yes. Rick, what's the matter? Thank you. But if we don't execute tonight, hey. this is for shit. You're absolutely right. Well, we are going to play to our strengths tonight. And let's get positive. Come on. I am OK, good. You own part of this place. So I'm going to be looking towards you to drive this forward. Yes? Yes. Last night, the minute you guys left, yeah, my team arrived and been working all night. Let's go. Huh? Yep. Now, come through. First of all, oh new God. wallpaper, new paint. Oh, look at 
Vinyl tablecloths. Yes. It's a new place. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm so overwhelmed. There are no words. There are no words. Look at it. And this. Oh my I... gosh. That's just amazing. The brick facade to give it some warmth. Oh my gosh. It's classy. Yeah. It was overwhelming for me. Just everything blew me away. Warm, vibrant, and exciting. Carpet, first time in 15 years. Hey, John, keep it clean. Yes? Keep it clean. Yes? And I'm not sticking to the floor. Look. John, what do you think? It's awesome. Yes? It's awesome. Rick, what do you think? That we don't deserve this. What do you mean, don't deserve it? Huh? Smack him. Hey. I just want to yell and scream, woohoo! I mean, oh, this good. is too much. This is too much. Every top barbecue house in the country has the best sauce. And that is what we're going to be famous for. Oh, Look over God. there. On site, homemade, hey, exclusive. And when people come to visit South Bend, Jay Willie's, the best barbecue house in town, oh, it's my warm. Gosh. I want to stay in this restaurant. I want to spend money in here. Today's a moving experience, both in my career as well as my attitude. And I just, there's so much potential, I just can't wait. With the staff energized by the changes to the restaurant, Gordon now unveils his plan for the food. 75 items on the last menu. No wonder we couldn't control it. Hey, it's now in half. It's fresh and it's going to be quick. From the homemade burger, the BLT, to the pulled pork. Potato skins, no processed cheese anywhere. Barbecued chicken, uh, spicy chicken wings and legs, yes. At this point, I think with the momentum that Chef Ramsey has given us, we are now committed to making this thing right. I'm going to do something I've never, ever done before. I've had my concerns about the lack of strength in the kitchen. They need a proper training and a proper insight to what's going on. I'm bringing in not one, not two, but four chefs. Scott, Kim, Michael, please, and April. This kind of tuition has never been done before. It's awesome. Chef Ramsey let us know that he was there for us. We will be ready for the relaunch of Jay Willie's tonight. Let's go. Coming up. Tonight is comeback night. Can Jay Willie's maintain their new standards during their most important dinner service ever? We can't drop standards. We're starting to slip. Come on. Or will they crack under the pressure? This is cold. This can't go out. Please concentrate. It's late, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry. This whole thing is just going to fall apart. Tonight's too important to fuck it up. That's next on Kitchen Nightmares. Jay Willie's has come a long way in a matter of days. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. And it's only minutes from relaunch. Tonight is comeback night, yes? Yes. yes. So, John. You've got to motivate the place, push it through its highs and lows. Don't just do it for Chef, do it for the Gipper. <laughs> yes, the Gipper. OK, guys, let's go. We're opening four minutes, yeah? Right. Let's go, yes? Let's go. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, your coleslaw it looks a little different now. Chef Ramsay is hoping his chefs will give Jay Willie's kitchen staff the support it needs to make this critical night a success. Welcome to Jay Willie's. Welcome to new Jay Willie's. I'll take the baby back ribs. Yo, yo, kitchen! Get us rolling, let's go, we're gonna be busy. I'm so apprehensive because if we aren't perfect, then none of this matters. Now I might as well just get in my car and drive home. Let's rock this shit out. Dave, you gotta expedite. You and Steve, you gotta stay connected. Come on, let's go. Let's get this shit out. In all my being, I didn't wanna fail. I was a little scared. Order up, 122. These guys have never been held to these standards. Yeah. Barbecue chicken. <laughs> this is one really cool. Good sauce, different. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Sean, that's it, that's it. Yeah. Got to a good start. Um, vibrant in there. Food, looking good. But it's not how you start, it's how you finish. How are we? The no bacon on the potato skins was not cool. Damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Let me check on your entrees. Nice to see you all, yes? You, entrees will be fabulous. <laughs> OK, guys, the skins they just sent, was it, there was no bacon in there. Please concentrate. Yes, sir. Cream corn and mac. It's all good. No, Dave, we do not send a dirty plate. We're getting busy, guys. We're starting to slip. Come on. Yes, sir. 
my gosh, Chef Ramsay busted me out. You know, there's a little barbecue sauce in the corner. Get it out. This is our ticket time. I'm so hungry now. We all are very hungry. It's the heart of dinner service. And in spite of the pressure to get dishes out, Unbelievable. Gordon insists on the staff maintaining its standards. Kept the customers waiting. We can't keep them waiting for fans. Yes, gotcha. What table? 14. Time is 7 o'clock. There you go. go. All right, 114, Steve. We're waiting for an hour. 114 gets our next check. Our next yeah. check. Come on, come on, come on. Let's push it, Steve. Come on, man. Uh, it's 8.30. It is, it is. It's late, and I'm tired, and I'm hungry. John. Standards, come on, yeah? The kitchen really got behind. Part of it was my fault because it was overwhelming for me. Come on, guys. Can we stop pushing food around the outside of the plate? They can't eat off the rim of a plate, guys. Yes, yes chef. Okay. We can't drop standards. Last fucking time, OK? Once fine, twice slightly pissed, three times. Take your jacket off and fuck off, yeah? Yes, yes chef. Thank you. Now clean it, John. As the backup in the kitchen continues to grow, John turns his attention to the potential disaster in the front of the house. I want drink, and I need food. She trusts me. OK. Yeah, trust me. <laughs> I, uh, I got to talk you? to these people. Do you? And uh, okay. just trust me. I don't know me. your name, though. My name, Jay Willie. Jay, oh. That's me. Jay. John. Yeah, John, I need some food. OK. OK. I'm going to do my best. How long's the wait? It's running pretty late right now. Let's worry about our standards and not worry about that, all right? John, can we look? Why are you going to run out with that, John? Look, at, look, at, look, 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 look. You, you taste that, then, and just think of a nice pile of shit. Yes, customers are waiting, but are we happy with that? You are happy with no, it. No, I'm not. Come on, then. Standards. There's so much stress. The guests were starting to get pretty tired of waiting. I did drop my standard, and I shouldn't have. I'm ready to go home. I'm We're taking a bunch of sure. Steve and I'll hold okay. okay. I mean, because that is kind of ridiculous. Uh, we'll get free desserts, right? Uh, I'll do my best to take care of you. I had so many people were upset, and I was embarrassing. I, I was just I was ready to pack up and leave at that point. We could, I'm sorry, we cook it fresh to order. Uh, come on, guys. Tonight's too important to fuck it up. Come on. I'll be back. Come on, please, Dave. No one's getting a handle of this, and I'm getting fucking irritated here. All right. Oh, the thought of crumbling existed most of the night, but the feeling was, I hope it just doesn't explode. I'm leaving. Two hours. No food, and it's just tough. I just want you to know, this isn't going to last. Thank you. Come on, guys. Tonight, Jay Willie's kitchen is being tested like it's never been tested before. We do not send a dirty place. And although the standards are better than ever, it's been way too long. I'll be back. One customer Gosh. is fed up with the wait. Two hours. No food. Right. And it's just tough. I just want you to know, this isn't going to last. I'm leaving. John, break. Two seconds, both of you a minute. I know tables have walked out, and we can't just all walk around with our heads on the floor. No. Come on, then. Dig deep, but yep. tables have backed up. It's not the end of the world, is it? We've still got to keep it going. Right. But if you give up, they give up. I'm sorry. Are we good? Play to the very end means the last ticket. I'm with it. Ready? Come on, guys. Okay, let's go. We got it. We're going to have to push the staff, or else this whole thing is just going to fall apart. Wait a minute. This is cold. This can't go out. That's all we needed. Fuck. You sound just like Gordon. Yeah, Come on. OK. No problem. With the owners stepping up, the staff gets inspired, which in turn motivates manager Dave. Come on, let's let's calm down and focus. We need some ribs and chicken, baby. Serve it. You know, I, I do feel that I'm going to have to step up and take charge and get her done. Six combos I need now. All right, let's do it. Full rag, tri-tip entree, and a half rag. Let's worry about our standards. You hear that? Make sure the ribs are hot. Oh, they're hot. They're beautiful. Service, please. Come on, you Muppet. Let's go. The kitchen has shifted into high gear. And with one final push, the highly anticipated food is on its way to the customers. Mine's oh, very good. Tender, spicy. All right. Very best ribs I've ever had. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, got an order up. Now we're moving. Now we're feeling good. Let's keep it up. Food's coming out right. Yeah. 
I believe that John has realized he will not accept substandard quality. Good deal. All right. We got a dining room full of locusts, man. They've eaten everything except for the plate. Every plate I've picked up has been clean. Awesome. All we got to do is get these tickets out, man. Just this last bag. Oh, I think I see the light at the end of the tunnel, folks. Now, I, I don't feel like I'm a man on an island alone. I know that Rick and Trish will be here to support me. That food looks beautiful. Yeah. yeah. This is the best hamburger ever had. There's no words wait, I guess. And we will be back. With the local seal of approval, Jay Willies is on the road to recovery. It was so nice to see clean plates coming back. Yes? Yes. yes. And we were so busy, 165 customers. I know there were some complaints, and it was difficult, but the kitchen got slammed, and more importantly, we held on to our standards. And now that we know how to do it, don't stop. We won't. Okay? They won't let me. No, no, no. Chef Ramsey has taught us have a passion and make perfect and don't accept any excuses. John, if they offer you a little less expensive cheese, and it might no. Not no. no, 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 no. The staff has changed. John has changed. I'm overwhelmed with sincere thanks for Chef Ramsey. Without him, we would not be here now. What's the feedback from the dining room? They loved yeah. it. The word is starting to spread. Definitely. You've got your foot on the ladder. It's really important that you continue climbing. You all did a bloody good job, and I'm really proud of you. Yeah. Yeah. Bye, guys. Bye, ladies. Thank you very good much. John has a new bounce and a step. He has to know that we're on his side and that we're all in this together, and it's just not him taking on the world. It's all of us and get ready, because we're going to take on the world. Wow. It's been very interesting for me to come to the heart of America and meet a really nice bunch of hard-working, humble individuals. But when I first arrived, I honestly thought the restaurant was beyond salvation. But tonight showed a little glimmer of hope. So long may it continue, and heaven help them. In the days that followed, everyone at Jay Willie's worked hard to keep their standards up. Let's do it. Start hollering out. Thank you, gentlemen and continued to perfect their barbecue sauce, a sauce that earned Jay Willie's first prize at the College Football Hall of Fame Ribs Cook-Off. <laughs> With a taste of success, the staff at Jay Willie's continues to work together to make its new barbecue house a success. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. What a mess. Chef Ramsay faces the most stubborn owner he's ever met. Billy, can you talk to me, please? No, nope, I have nothing to say. His Long Island restaurant is crumbling. Oh, my God, what a disaster. Disaster. But he refuses to admit anything is wrong. You can't think this is good. It's not bad in everybody's opinion. His wife is a mess. I don't know what to do. <laughs> the chef doesn't care. I don't want to be a chef. And his staff is just plain angry. Come on, be a fucking baby, Billy. You're not the man everyone here thought you were. You're a weak man, Billy. When Gordon gives him a dose of the truth... This is embarrassing. So why can't you act like a man and do something about it? It's more than this owner can handle. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way you talk to me. Go fuck yourself. I'll make it work myself without his help. With only one week to turn it around... Everything's coming out, and this place is going to get clean. Gordon Ramsay's demands for change may have this owner on the run. Billy! I've had it with these people. And this restaurant's doors may be closed forever. Put the place up for fucking sale. I'm done. Done. Sinai, New York, an upper middle class town on the north shore of Long Island. Inhabited by the working class and city commuters with no shortage of trendy eateries. And then there's the handlebar. Hello, handlebar, how can I help you? Bill Leroy, a former construction worker, and his wife Carolyn bought the handlebar just one year ago. Oh boy, the handlebar was a really nice place. And when I saw it was for sale, I jumped on it. And our specials menu. When we came into the handlebar, we saw that it had been run down. 
but Billy being so handsy. Now they're on. We saw the potential of having a great place. In its heyday, this was the place to be. This was the place that the judges came. This was the place that the lawyers came, the doctors came. Now it's not like that anymore. The nightmare began when 70% of the money was coming from the bar and almost nothing was coming from the dining room. When you can't turn 18 tables on a Friday or a Saturday night, you're in a lot of trouble. <sighs> Bill is an okay manager. Can I bother you to make me a cup of coffee? Billy usually stays at the bar, but being an owner, he has to be more involved. Like, answer the phone. Somebody on the phone? Sometimes he can be very grouchy. Now, go put all the stuff I back where you got it, then. I didn't do that. Like, his mood swings change. Well, I've had it with these people. This place is gross. Like, dirt, filth that had been built up over the past 20 years. The interior, it looks dated. The decor. <laughs> I think it's great. The core menu I, is basically the same as I inherited with the restaurant. They look disgusting. I don't know why anybody orders them. Melissa is an excellent chef. I'm not a chef. I don't claim to be a chef. I don't want to be a chef. I'm not very creative. Five minutes. The food is crap. I, wish wasn't I think hiring me wasn't necessarily the best idea. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I don't intend for it to be my career. I really don't think Melissa has any weaknesses as a cook. The day we call it quits is the day we have not one penny to put into this place. We took out equity line of credit that's almost maxed out and drained our savings account. God help us. If the handlebar fails, we risk losing our house. Then I'd never want to lose my house. We need to worry about you and me and the handlebar, bottom line. If Chef Ramsay doesn't come here, our time is very limited. I definitely don't think it's another year. Chef Gordon Ramsay is on a mission to turn the handlebar around. Go west. West left, west right. Except he has one small problem. Handlebar. I'm lost. Um, I wonder if you could help me. OK. I'm right on the fork, but do I go left? Do I go right? Because they both say west. OK, so you're going to bear to the right. Right. And there's going to be like a big shopping center right after it. OK, there it is there, handlebar. There's Gordon Ramsay. How do you know? Because I just talked to him on the phone. Get out of here. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Handlebar. Finally. Now, we're in Mount Sinai, just outside New York. Mount Sinai. Sounds a little bit like cyanide. I hope it doesn't taste like it. I'm a little nervous to meet Chef Ramsay. I'm Carolyn. Carolyn. Hello, Hello, Bill. How are you? How are you? The man is an expert at what he does. The man is A, a well-renowned chef. B, owns beautiful restaurants because I've seen them on the internet. Whatever you like. Uh, you don't get that way because you're an idiot. Right. Hello. Gordon Ramsay's like really hot. He has like a nice body and stuff. Like for an older man, he's very, very hot. I didn't want to serve him because I just talk and I just don't stop talking. So I was nervous if I said something stupid that I just wouldn't stop and I would just keep talking and talking and talking. This is our dinner menu. Right. We also have our price fix menu. Right. And the early wow. bird specials. Okay, great. We'll have a quick look. Thank you. Yeah. One menu, two menu, three menu, four menu. Right. Definitely quantity. Let's hope it's quality. I need to continue to cook this because I fucked up. Pizza fondue, filet mignon fondue, Swiss cheese fondue. Weird. Excellent. You ready yet? I'll go for the soup of the day. Soup of the day? I'll go for the seafood uh, crepe as well. And then I'm going to finish with the filet mignon fondue. Filet mignon? Please. Thank you, mate. No problem. Excellent. That was nice and busy. Dining room's empty. Look at the place. The decor's ghastly. It's so 80s. Even the fish tank's been here longer than me. Wow. Gosh. How am I feeling? I think Chef Ramsay came close to ordering the worst things. But, you know, everything that's here is pretty much crap food. Thanks. Yeah? Thank you. No problem. 
New England clam chowder. This is so sweet, it's good. When Chef Ramsay was sitting there, I was just praying that he was going to be happy with everything. Where's Bill? Let me see if I can find he? him. Thank you. Oh, dear goodness. Honey Gordon would like to see you for a minute. Great. First thoughts that went through my head was, oh my God. Yes. And just like to say, that that's uh, nicely seasoned, um, very tasty, and perfect for a winter's day. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Nice. Melissa does a nice job. Grabs. I'll, I'll check on the rest of your food. Thank you very much. He said your soup was fabulous. Really? Yes, he loved it. I think Melissa's a great cook. I think she's very creative. I think Melissa underestimates herself a lot. But I thought it came out pretty shitty this time. <laughs> <laughs> There's some grapes. Well. There's crab in there. There's lobster and some shrimp in there also. Thank you. No problem. Hi, yeah, yeah. Chef Ramsay seems to have a uh, habit to take his food apart before he eats it. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what he has to say. How is everything? Robbery. Um, the scallops are firm. Uh oh. The prawns are way overcooked. Oh god. And the crab meat, it's plastic. It's imitation crab meat. Yeah. If you told me it was imitation crab meat, I wouldn't have ordered it. Oh, God help me. Well, that was his ass. Seafood crepe. Yeah. That's seafood crap. This is the worst of it, I'm sure. And, uh, I'm waiting on my beef fondue, filet mignon fondue, which is raw, so... Why am I waiting so long? There's the steak. And this is the oil. Thank you. No problem. Nothing like waiting to cook your own meat, is there? Right, put that in. Time for a little prayer. <laughs> ah. Comes out looking like dog food. He spits it out, I'm leaving. That was rancid, pointless, tasteless, and a complete utter joke. I don't want to cry. Why would you deep fry a filet mignon? One of the country's best steaks, deep fried. Are they stupid? Oh no. I wanted him to be happy with us, but I kind of knew deep down inside that there has to be something wrong with the restaurant. Otherwise, he wouldn't be here. Oh, my God. What a disaster. <laughs> disaster. It's a disaster. No, it's not. After an underwhelming first meal, Okay, pull together. Gordon realizes that the owners and the chef are oblivious to the restaurant's real problems. What's wrong with the business? It's this room, as you see it, and we can't fill 18 tables on a Friday night. That's the problem. No, the problem here is the food. The food's bad, Bill. I never really had complaints about the food, so that was never really an area of concern to me. When the fondue arrived, I mean, that's just a joke. I don't enjoy the fondue either. But you're the chef, aren't you? You're the one that's, you know, you're, you're running it as the head chef, right? That, that's the intent. So, change it. I don't know what to do about it. Have you lost your passion? I never had a passion to begin with. I, I don't want to be a chef. I was really shocked that that's the way she felt. So you're not a chef? No. I had applications for the job here as a chef when she approached me and said, would you give me the opportunity? I mean, you don't ask for that opportunity if you don't care what you're doing. Why did you take the job, Melissa, if you're not a chef? The other guy was going out that was here. OK. Um... I didn't think our situation was as bad as I'm finding out minute by minute. Coming up... Oh, my God almighty. Gordon's shocking kitchen investigation. This place hasn't been cleaned in years. That's disgusting. ...leads to a wild showdown between Billy and Gordon. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way you talk to me. Go fuck yourself. ...with the future of the handlebar on the line... I don't know what to do. It's a mess. ...will Billy be able to put his pride aside and accept Gordon's help? I'm done. I'm done. So done. The hell with everything. Or will he give up on the restaurant for good? I don't care if it's all for nothing. Billy! 
You're not going to believe what happens tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Having exposed Melissa's apathy in the kitchen, I don't need this. I'm out of my mind. Gordon observes a dinner service to find out how her attitude is affecting the food. I know he's here to help, but it's still very nerve wracking having someone of his stature standing there staring at you. What are they do? The mushrooms. Is that how that goes out like that? Yes. Holy crap. Stuffed mushrooms. Thank you. Oh, so those mushrooms look sadder than the customer. Gordon said they're very sad mushrooms. Why? <laughs> when, just now? Actually, that's a recipe of my own. I made it myself. I was very disappointed that it wasn't presented to him the right way. People eat them, shit. For you? What's my choice? Potato, rice, vegetables? Big potato, mashed potato, french fries, rice, little veggie. We use half instant, half with fresh potatoes. Why do they mix the powdered mashed potatoes with fresh mashed potatoes? That's a way of reusing the baked potatoes. So you don't even actually make fresh mashed potatoes? No. No. Do you want mashed potato, baked potato, french fries, rice, or vegetables? Don't burn them, please. OK. That's burnt. A little more done than usual, but other than that, yeah. Just an hour into dinner service, and the restaurant has run out of basic vegetables. We ran out of broccoli cauliflower. Yeah. And replaced them with an unusual substitute. Radishes. Radishes? Yes. Wow, I've never heard of that before. How are you, radishes? Honestly, Gordon? Of course. Not something I would, you know, expect with my steak. You want some veg, right? Yeah, I, you know. Is there anything to keep him happy? Have we checked with Melissa? I, I wouldn't eat the radishes either. So customers are complaining about no vegetables. Any broccoli, vegetable, carrots, or cabbage? Veg. Ah, veg. Oh, stop. What is it? They're stalks. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a frozen bag. That's why it's crap. Even though Melissa is managing to keep up with the orders, the customers are still not satisfied. No, I don't like it at all. This is uneatable. It's not real crap. And Gordon needs Billy to finally understand that the food is Handlebar's biggest problem. Billy, customers are complaining about the food. You can't walk around oblivious to the fact that you think this is good. Yeah, but it's not bad in everybody's opinion. You can't take care of everybody's taste buds. Something that some people like, other people aren't going to like that at all. No one's got any control. And basics here that have just gone completely fucking wrong. If you accept it, everybody else has accepted it. And truthfully, you've accepted it. No, oh, absolutely not. I was kind of really disappointed. I, I knew we needed help. I didn't think we were that bad. I was quite skeptical about his intentions. Whatever. Really starting to dislike him. After witnessing last night's pathetic dinner service, Gordon comes in early for a kitchen inspection. What a mess. Nothing labelled, portions taken out. That's dreadful. Broccoli. Last night we ran out of vegetables. God, the chef can't be bothered to cook fresh broccoli. The remnants of Exxon Valdez. Oh, my God. When was the last time the back of the fridge was clean? When you look at it, what is that in there? Oh, my God almighty. That there was a clam. Oh. What a mess. The state of the fridge... Melissa, you got two minutes? ...has only confirmed Gordon's belief that the restaurant lacks true passion and leadership. So, you're in charge of the kitchen and the general hygiene, yeah? Supposed to be, yes. <laughs> Why is it in a mess? Uh, it's 100 times cleaner than it was six months ago. Sure it was. OK. When was the last time you had a little wipe down there or...? Uh... In here? Just, just even... That I've never done. My God. Unbelievable. Oh, this is embarrassing. That oh. usually does clean that. Right, OK. Um, I'm glad you're starting to make excuses for it. Yep. If you thought this was bad, have a look at this. Chef Ramsay seemed to feel that I was making excuses for everything and really had no idea of the past practices that had gone on here. OK. 
Last night we served frozen vegetables to a customer, and we got two boxes of broccoli there. You know, I can do it all. That's it. You were happy to serve frozen broccoli over fresh broccoli. I'm trying to open up your eyes, Billy, and explain to you, you know, what the current situation is. When was the last time this fridge was cleaned? A week ago. Oh, come on. This hasn't been cleaned in years. No, oh, no, it hasn't. No, 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 it hasn't. I'm sorry, 21 years in the business, I'll bet every fucking dollar I have, this fucking place hasn't been cleaned in years. I'm disgusted. Put your hand down there. You still never did bend down and touch it. It was a big thing of denial for him. I'll take responsibility for the fact that I haven't changed it, but it's not all my fault, you know? Everything's coming out, and this place is going to get cleaned. I wish he'd give me a little more credit for cleaning it up as much as I have so far. It looks 60, 70 percent times better than it used to look in here. Billy, that's disgusting. No, it's, it's, it's not fine. We've got a big problem. When was the last time that fridge was steam cleaned? I had the kid in there doing it last week. Did you check what he'd done? No, obviously not. So why can't you act like a man and do something about it? Yep. My God. I just don't even know what to say anymore. He just keeps tearing apart everything that wasn't done and not giving me credit or a uh, pat on the back for things that were done. Unfucking believable So that just proves and confirms how weak this guy is. He's not running this place. This place is running him and is in need of a fucking serious clean. That is appalling. Prompted by Gordon's shocking discovery, Melissa enlists the wait staff to do a thorough cleaning. What do you use to clean that? Bleach and soap. It's disgusting. I really wish I had a mask on me right now. Billy. Just two seconds in. I was hoping he was going to tell me, I understand, Billy, that this isn't your fault, but it really needs to be taken care of, so let's take care of it. I'm fucking pissed off. And I'm upset on the kind of shit that I've just discovered in there. Time to drag me through the mud some more. It is what it is. You don't seem one fucking ounce bothered about it, Billy. You can't just stick your head back in the sand and ignore it, Billy. Sure you can. What do you want me to do, flip out and yell and scream like you do? That's not my way. The responsibility is yours, Billy. I guess you want something done right, I guess you have to do it yourself. But so maybe what? I'll just get rid of everybody in the restaurant and I'll do it all myself. Great idea. And then when it doesn't work out, and then when I drop dead because I fucking sleep two hours a day, then maybe it'll get done. Or maybe, who cares, once you're dead, it doesn't make a difference anyway. Oh, come on. Now I feel you're copping out of me now. Well, oh, because now I'm just getting dragged through the mud. And... You're a weak man, Billy. I really I'm glad you had enough. I was not going to be ridiculed just for the sake of needing his help. Finished. Can you at least talk to me? No. Nope. Billy, can you talk to me, please? No. Nope. I have nothing to say. Billy. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way you talk to me. Go fuck yourself. That's right. The hell with everything. I'll make it work myself without his help. Everything in my life that I've ever set out to do, I did on my own. Finished. Let's go. I'm done. What a week, man. Billy! Unable to accept Gordon's criticism... Billy! Billy decides he's had enough. Fuck him. Fuck him, fuck them. The fridge is disgusting. I've asked it to be cleaned. He's telling me I'm dragging him through the mud. And he fucking walks out. He's mad right now and he's being stubborn. He doesn't we want you to leave. He wants your help. We he's just not... Right now, he's too ashamed to admit it. I just want him to act responsible. While Gordon tries to make sense of Billy's actions... He doesn't have to act like a baby. Billy rehearses a speech to Gordon. I am so done. Don't act me on. I have nothing to say to you. Not a word. There was nothing in my head that made me want to think and reconsider about doing this. Can you go out there and just, you know, have a word with them? You guys are the backbone of this place. You can't just throw the towel in. I knew Billy would get mad. Done. Just fucking done with all this bullshit. But honestly, you don't face the truth, you can't do anything about it. We've been busting our ass trying to help you out. You're giving up on yourself, this place, and all of and us. us. I wouldn't talk to my dog the way that jackass talks to me. I'm done. He's telling you the truth, though, Billy. Great. There's ways to go about it. 46 years old, never been talked to like that by anybody. And you know what? 
The only thing that's keeping me from fucking hitting him with a fucking baseball bat is that I'd go to fucking jail for it. I'm done. 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 Finished. And you're not the man everyone here thought you were, Billy. Absolutely you, not. If you're going to give up and you're going to give up on all of us, yep. come on, be a fucking baby, Billy. Fuck it. I'm done. Yeah, you know what? Put the place up for fucking sale. I can go back to construction and enjoy my fucking life the way I used to before I, all of this bullshit. We'll go to bankruptcy court and just give it all up. Fuck it. I'm done. Bye. So help me God, I will not open the door tomorrow and you can all go fuck yourselves and I don't care if it's all for nothing. Do not care. Billy! You know what? I'll survive somehow. Billy. Fuck you. Unbelievable. Having just missed her chance to defuse the situation, Carolyn now faces the prospect of running the handlebar alone. Very upset. I have a husband that's ready to throw in the towel. So here I am, stuck holding the bag. Let me help you. I want you to help me, but I don't know what to do. I have a job okay. that I have to work so I can pay my mortgage. Sure, okay. I don't know what to do. Why can't we work at turning this around? I would love to work at turn this around. Okay. Let me open the restaurant tonight. Okay. Okay. I'm feeling that I'm going to do what I have to do to make everything work. Because I'm not walking out now and I'm not flushing the last 17 years of my life down the bowl. To further inspire Carolyn to move forward with the plan, Gordon shows her the dedication of her staff. What a difference. It's looking great. It looks so much huh? better. You've done a great job. We were clean to walk in. We were more or less just doing it to just show that, like, we are dedicated and we do want this to work. Billy's gone. Whether he comes back later or not, it's not going to affect what we're doing tonight. We're opening, and we're opening with a clean fridge, healthy attitude. We're hungry to get this place full. Yes? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Her courage now bolstered by her staff's support Carolyn leaves Billy a message. Billy, I'm not going to stop now. I will do whatever it takes to make my restaurant succeed with Chef Ramsey's help. I'll succeed. I just told him my determination that I'm going forward with this, regardless of if he wanted to or not. The restaurant is about to open for dinner. But to get the handlebar moving in the right direction, Gordon makes some quick additions to the menu. Melissa, let's do a special tonight. Some fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. It's which clams? Chef Ramsay, he's one of the best chefs in the world, you know, standing right next to me and was uh, very surreal. Generously season them with the flour straight in, into the fire, and then again, a nice little season there. OK. Yeah. The minute the customer arrives at the table, they sit down, and we need to give them fresh, hand-cut, homemade potato chips. A warm welcome. Mm. No, those are good. This place is more laid back, so I think the chips are a good idea. It's different. Nice. Hi, good evening. Do you have a reservation? I thought it was great that Chef Ramsay could show us how to make such a simple thing like potato chips that everybody would love. We do have a special appetizer today. Deep fried clams with a homemade tartar sauce. All right, we'll do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Uh, potato chips are going down well, special's going well. Keep it going, yeah? Nice atmosphere in the dining room, really good. Clams. There we are, clams. Every day love the clams. They said that's the best thing that they've ever had here, so it's going really good. We're not serving dirty bowls to the table. Let's go, Melv, yeah? I didn't think he was going to come back. I was really, really surprised that he came back so quickly. I am angry about things that transpired earlier in the day, still. Hours after threatening to sell the business, owner Billy returns to the handlebar just in time for dinner service. There was absolutely no part of me that still wanted Chef Ramsey to be here. I wanted him to be gone. Billy, come on. Let go of it. 
When Billy came back, he had his bad attitude of, yeah, whatever. Billy, please, I love you. That's why I'm here. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. I can honestly say that I love my wife more than anything in this world, so I came back here for my wife. While Billy tries to reconnect with his restaurant, I need my food. Melissa struggles to give the wait staff complete orders. I ran half the fucking order. I need the rest of it. And there's a lot of problems. Who's this for here, Melissa? It's been here 37 minutes. I don't know. The crepes, I forgot half of it, so. Melissa, just stop communicating. I mean, that's just how Melissa is. And I think that's when we ran into problems. Are any of my foods coming out for any of my tables? I have no idea. Communication is the one thing, and it's not happening right now. Oh, boy. And I was, you know, in the weeds so much, I really couldn't tell who was waiting and who was wanting. I need salmon pontieri. Was the salmon on that? I think Melissa got very flustered back there. This place was total chaos. It's 9 o'clock. I've been here since what time? 5.30. I just don't know what to say. With the orders backed up in the kitchen. Killing me. Killing me. Whatever. God help us. Impatient, hungry customers begin taking out their frustrations you come no, you know, on each other. You know what you're talking about I before you open up your mouth. I don't open mouth. up my mouth any time. You can do it with Can we stop talking to my parents this way? That's so ridiculous. It's a total disaster. And uh, really think I'm to the point now that I don't know what else to do. Come on, Billy. Can we talk about it? Yeah. Billy has no choice but to listen to Chef Ramsay, because if he won't listen, then we might as well just shut the doors and walk away right now. I have never, ever, ever seen my kitchen fall apart like that. Ever. Ever. On our busiest nights. Never have I seen that. Ever. Melissa has to talk now. This is the most crucial stage of the service where she has to open up and, and talk. And get help from the and other get help. Let's just delegate with so many tables on. The man is one of the top chefs in the world. And um, maybe I should um, put aside the ill feelings and listen to what he has to say. Melissa may not be communicating, but the menu is vaster. Yeah. I see what you're saying. At that point, I was very open-minded to his ideas. Seriously, I'm pleased you're back, yeah? I, you're, the, you're the foundation of this place. We have a little chat with the staff, because I think they would like to hear that we're all on the same track. The first hour of service was amazing. And then we got backed up. We got backed up bad. Melissa, you refused to communicate. I didn't know what the fuck was going on. Yeah, I agree with you. Honestly, this menu has to come down, yes? That has to be condensed. It'd be appreciated. New, small, dynamic menu. A menu that we can push out. It'll be real nice to get a new menu that'll be more concise and in order. It'll be good. <laughs> Relaunch tomorrow night. We have to make it a success. Get some sleep, yes? In preparation for the relaunch, Gordon's team worked through the night updating Handlebar's tired, dated look. Ready? Ready? Let's have a look at the new handlebar. Let's go. Oh, no. Here we go. Wow. This place looks awesome. It's fresh, it's new. Billy, it's warm. There's nothing that's antiquated. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Feeling wow. Wow is all I can say. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah, wow. What about the lamps? Huh? No more gloves. No more gloves. No more gloves. We are no longer stuck in the 80s. Look at it. Warm, bright, vibrant, happy. Yes. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Huh? Thank you. Everything is awesome. It's incredible. I'm totally blown away. <laughs> Billy, you have Long Island's first ever gastro pub. Gastropub? What the fuck is a gastropub? What's a gastropub? Good question, gastropub. <laughs> Good question. I'm just gonna answer. I've never heard of a gastropub, babe. We're the first on Long Island. That is so incredibly awesome. A gastropub is warm, open all hours, come and relax and enjoy with no intimidation. We cater for everybody. It's perfect for the neighborhood.
There are 25 gastropubs in Manhattan, and they are doing a phenomenal amount of business. A pub with an emphasis on fine food at reasonable prices, that kind of hit home. It was exactly the type of place that my wife and myself were looking to turn it into. Knowing Billy and Carolyn's love for motorcycle riding. Let's go. Ready to make some noise, yes? Gordon has organized Handlebar's first annual motorcycle rally to help spread the word about the relaunch. Ecstatic. Ecstatic. Yes. But what Billy and Carolyn don't know is Gordon has reached out to another bike enthusiast and rock and roll legend. Twisted Sisters, very own Dee Snyder. Hey. I'm good. good to good see good you, Al. You, well. Thank good you so much for coming. Carol. Hi, how are you, Carol? I'm Bill, Dee. Hey, Twisted Sisters. <laughs> I never would have imagined here I would get on my bike and ride with Chef Ramsay and Dee Snyder. I was like, oh my God, how cool is that? Billy, are you ready? Yes, we are. It was phenomenal that Gordon Ramsay got him to come here and help us kick off the new start of the restaurant. It was nice to get out there and ride. It was nice to see that Chef Ramsey could ride a motorcycle and enjoy himself. It was a lot of fun. All right, let's go. Get these out. The grand reopening of Handlebar tonight. Come down to the Handlebars reopening tonight. Grand reopening, come on down. Come on down. I'm smiling because I feel that the Handlebar is pointed in the right direction now. We have some place to go and some place to look forward to. Now that the word had spread, Gordon gets back to the crucial task of introducing the new gastropub menu. That's the menu in front of it. Look at it. There is nothing complicated on there. Whether it's the steak, mussels, the salmon, the sausage, everything is so simply done. The new menu, I think, is uh, phenomenal. He consolidated it down to a lot of the comfort food type favorites just served in a different light. Melissa, this is the night that we make the statement. And when we start getting in the weeds, you have to come out yourself and open up. Yes, sir. Chef Ramsay put his effort into this to change us, so I'm going to try not to let him down. We're going to start confirming the first ever gastropub in Long Island. After the bomb last night, I'm sweating. I'm nervous to see how my kitchen pulls it together. Make it work. Coming up, it's relaunch night. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And there's a lot of questions still to be answered. Will Melissa be able to handle the pressure? The salmon looks black underneath. I'm going to hang myself. Will Billy lose hope? This isn't cooked. All right. apart. And will the handlebar finally have a successful evening? I'm sorry, but I'm not serving shit like that. Or will it go up in flames? That's it. Find out next on Kitchen Nightmares. Good evening. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. It's the grand reopening of the handlebar. Nice to see you, my darling. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And Chef Ramsay's motorcycle rally has clearly spread the word about the relaunch. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. Let's go, let's go, let's go. With Billy appearing to embrace Chef Ramsay's changes. Everything's homemade. Everything. All eyes are now on Melissa to step it up in the kitchen. All right, stay focused. Here we go. Everybody's excited to come in and see how it looks now and see what's going on with the menu and everything else. Can I have the portobello mushroom melt? Grilled chicken sandwich. Salmon good. You all will be pleased with the food tonight. Thank you. Melissa, I need the shrimp cocktail and then the salads and then the entrees. All right. Melissa. Melissa, listen to me. I want this communication ramped up tonight. You need to connect. The minute you stop talking, we're fucked. Okay. I think Melissa needs to be more assertive and keep everybody under control. Let's go. Too quiet for me. As the restaurant fills up... Thank you. ...and customers embrace the new gastropub menu... Yeah, right. Perfect. This is good. Gordon takes a moment to make a special announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome a local legend. Twisty Sisters, yes, Dee Snyder. <laughs> He came in through the door on that bike. It was just amazing. Everybody was clapping and cheering and having a great time. How cool is this, huh? All right, here's the deal. 
In honor of the grand reopening of Handlebar Restaurant, we're going to be auctioning this bike off. So if you want to bid on this beautiful Holly Davidson Sportster, you can go to Handlebar Restaurant website and put a bid in there, and all the proceeds will go to the March of Dimes. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Dee Snyder. With Dee Snyder's family and friends now seated. I'm going for the portobello mushroom melt. In the first fully packed house in over a year. It's all about steak. Fish and chips, please. House salad. House salad? Yep. Sure. Thank you. The kitchen is about to be tested. The salmon looks black underneath, Melissa. I don't think it's burnt, honestly. Pass through the spatula. I think it's okay. No way, madam. Yeah? I got you. I'm not serving charcoal shit like that. No. Fucking disgusting. Melissa thought she could just take care of everything herself, and she had two other cooks and didn't ask for their help. It's a recook. I'm very sorry, Beth. I hope it is better. Me too, Missy. I'm so sorry. In her rush to fill orders, Frickin salmon. Melissa starts sacrificing the quality of the food. This isn't cooked. Oh. Look at the middle of that fucking salmon. Gross. That salmon looked like what you'd find in a seafood section. Like, it was shiny and it looked cold. Like, are you fucking kidding me? The salmon we sent came back fucking raw, so we're doing it again for the third time. Frickin' salmon. Let's do this. I think Melissa got very flustered back there. Falling apart. Why are we falling apart? Do we have any other salmon elsewhere? She is. Where is my salmon? Where the frickin' salmon? Billy, if it's burnt or it's raw again, I'm going to shove it down somebody's throat. Everything just kept compounding and compounding to the point where it was a total disaster. you got to be kidding me. I'm going to hang myself. I burnt the shit out of this. After first overcooking, no fucking way. Then undercooking the salmon. Raw. Melissa hopes the third time is the charm. Phil, but she's got to open up and fucking communicate. If she doesn't start communicating now, we're fucked. Yeah. Yep. Please, yeah. She needs to utilize the other two cooks that she has in the kitchen. It's not a one-man show, and it can never work if she thinks it can be. Honey, let's just get it right this time. Okay. Melissa, use these two guys. I'm trying. I want to hear it. Open up, communicate, yeah? Uh, you know what? You want to cook that? I know. I got, I got it. Please. Thank you. I will take care of the veg. Good girl. I didn't realize I can't take care of the line on my own. Salt and pepper, please. Yeah, I Thank got you. Here. I really need to open up and communicate and get things going. Your salmon is coming, honey. I'm very sorry. Lovely. Good to go. Thank you very much, honey. Gordon's persistence with Melissa appears to finally be paying off. You give it a thumbs up? That's good. Yeah, all right. There we go. All right, we gotta get this together. I need three or a prize. Three or a Right now, at the moment, I understand Chef Ramsay's whole concept is to communicate and keep everything in order. I gotta get it going. As long as I can communicate with the guys next to me, it will get it working properly. I need to concentrate on Dee's table, yes? We are doing it now. Okay. Take the two burgers whenever you can. Melissa really shocked me tonight where she was able to ask Eric and George, oh, can you do this? Can you get this? We are doing real well. Let's keep it up. Very, very good. This is good. This is amazing. Lovely. That's good. The night we had a couple of really large screw-ups, but in the end it all worked out. Hey, great menu, right? Everybody was happy. I feel very excited. I feel good. That's it. In the next couple of days, the word continued to spread throughout Long Island about its first gastropub. We have a Wonza Fulman menu. That was the best burger I've ever eaten. I thought it was cooked really well. Reinvigorated by the new direction and updated menu, Melissa has found her passion again. One small Caesar, one small how. Chef Ramsay being here has definitely brought new life into my job. Chicken sandwiches up and out, burgers up and out. I do have more passion about it. I want to make sure everything is good. I'm surprising myself now. Even the wait staff has taken it upon themselves to maintain the cleanliness of the restaurant. We're going to make a list of what needs to be cleaned every night because we want to keep it clean and we want to make it look like presentable. And Billy, with renewed hope and determination, is moving forward. Something to enjoy while they're waiting to take your order. Inspiring everyone to make the handlebar a success. Well done.
This place is going to be a success. I tell you, great location, great food, great gastro pub. My wife and myself are very appreciative of what he did. It seemed like there was a black cloud hanging over the handlebar. Um, I think the sun's starting to shine a little bit. Congratulations on being Long Island's first gastro pub. <laughs> Chef Ramsay came to my restaurant, went above and beyond anything I could have possibly asked for, and I know this restaurant's going to be successful from here on out. That was tough. Very tough indeed. We made a lot of changes. Changed the menu, changed the decor. But there's one thing in there that I thought was completely unchangeable, and that was Bill. And we even managed that.